The EA211, we commonly know it as the 1.4 TFSI, the TSI, and the 1.5 TFSI or TSI, depending on whether we're buying a car from Volkswagen or Audi or some of the other brands that use these engines. Now, in 2016, the Evo version of this engine was released, and this really builds on the success of the original. The EA111s were relatively unreliable. They had a twin charger that produced a lot of power, but there were a lot of problems. The EA211 first generation was so much better than that original one. It's the one that I had in my car. I've had trouble-free motoring from it for about seven years now, and I've been really happy with it. It gives a good mix of power and performance. And this video really is just looking at the next iteration from 2016, the Evo version, to see what has been built in to improve the engine over the previous generation. Rather than producing lots of different engines, Volkswagen Group have decided to focus specifically on the EA211 platform for many popular cars. And they've really spent a lot of research and development money making this engine really good. There's a 1.4 version and most cars now will come with a 1.5 version. Now the 1.4 is generally found in the hybrid engines and the 1.5 is the one that we would get in the non-hybrid version. There are some significant differences between the 1.4 and the 1.5 in the way they work. And firstly I should say that with the hybrid they've kept the engine simple. They've thrown out the active cylinder technology. They've kept to the auto cycle, they're not adopting the Miller or the Atkinson or any of these fancy cycles. And in the 1.5 version, they're using the Miller cycle, aiding further the fuel efficiency. So the 1.5 really is a very efficient, economical engine. The 1.4 is efficient and economical, not as economical as the 1.5, but it is a simpler engine. There is less stuff to go wrong. And they've done that really because controlling the electrical powertrain and the engine is a fairly complex thing in a hybrid. There's a lot of decisions that need to be made as to when they cut in and they cut out. And just adding the complexity of the cylinder on demand and the differences you will get from not using the auto cycle, just make that a little bit more complex. They have moved into the Evo 2 revision doing a 1.5 version in the hybrids. For most of us now buying the EA211 Evo, we're stuck with either the 1.4 basic engine or the 1.5 more complex engine. Using the Miller cycle in the 1.5 version of the engine means they could increase the compression ratio, which is now 12.5 to one. The one litre TSI has a lower compression ratio, but operates in a similar format. In the Miller cycle, just very briefly, the intake valves close earlier than they would in the auto cycle. The engine then has less to compress, the less compression going on, and the expansion stroke is effectively longer. It seems to shorten the compression stroke, closing that valve earlier. There's less air in there to compress, and that really does aid the efficiency of the engine. Obviously, it only does that when you don't need power. When you do need power, things are adjusted. The cylinder on demand as well shuts down cylinders two and three, so you're running on one and four. And it's a seamless operation. The previous version that I've got in my car is good. You can hardly detect it cutting in and cutting out. And within one crank revolution, the system has converted to two cylinder operation or back to four cylinder. And they've really improved that. They've expanded the range very slightly. So it has a slightly wider operating range on the Evo version of the engine. We're also starting to see adjustments to the turbo technology that's being used. They're using variable geometry turbochargers. These have been used on diesel engines for many years, but they're starting to use them now in these gasoline or petrol powered engines. This really ensures the engine spools up very quickly. It feels much closer to a naturally aspirated version. There's a little bit of lag and a little bit of a delay in my version of the engine, but that has been minimized a little bit in the Evo revision by using this different turbo configuration. It makes for a much smoother operation as well. Turbo speeds can reach about 290,000 RPM and exhaust gas temperatures are up to about 950 degrees centigrade grade. Things that these turbos can handle fairly easily. They've chosen a very, very reliable turbo unit for these engines. And it gives a very strong amount of torque 
from very, very low down in the RPM range. The 1.5 engine actually sounds notably different to the 1.4, maybe a little less refined, a little more raucous, a little more visceral. It is more of a driver's engine in terms of the pure engine note. The fuel injectors on the 1.5 litre engines are now rated to about 350 bars of pressure, which is quite a lot. They need it for the efficiency and they can now manage up to five precisely measured bursts of fuel delivery per cycle. And that really allows you a lot more control over the flame front, the way the power is produced and how clean the engine actually burns. Port injection was added to the EA211 engine. I'm not quite sure of the year when this was added and I know that it wasn't added in all regions. Only some regions got port injection. Some of the cars imported from Europe to other regions like Australia may also have this port injection as well. It's just worth checking where the car originated, where it was built and chances are if it was built in Europe it will have the benefit of the these extra injectors. The dual injection, the port injection, the direct injection is interesting. One source I found said that the port injectors are only used at idle and low loads. At medium loads they use both sets of injectors so the port injection and the direct injectors are used and at high loads it switches to the direct injection only and one of the reasons was to meet EU6 emissions targets which is why Europe and the UK have this extra set of injectors on the intake and that's where fuel is also injected into the port and it helps clean the intake valves that generally happens when the engine is cold when it's in a warm-up cycle and it minimizes the risk of carbon buildup on those intake valves which was a problem on all of the previous versions of the EA211 engine. That's another thing then that the manufacturers have done to improve the long-term reliability of these engines. Having port injection still doesn't completely minimise the carbon buildup, but it is significantly better than just having direct injection and no port injection at all. It'll depend to some degree on the quality of fuel you use and the additives specifically that are in that fuel, which is why I always recommend that people buy good quality fuel from good brands that have a reputation for producing well engineered additives. When you're dealing with low loads, the efficiency overall is reduced when you have direct injection because the lower intake speed and volume results in an uneven air fuel mixture and combustion efficiency is reduced. But when that goes in through the port, it means you get a much better mix of the fuel and the air charge. You'll also notice that North American versions of this engine are not as economical as these European ones, primarily due to this significant change that was made. From about 2018, we've seen the introduction of the gasoline particulate filter. And I was in Audi the other day talking to the service manager about these gasoline particulate filters or auto particulate filters or petrol particulate filters, depending on what region you're in, they've got different names. The idea of the particulate filter inside the petrol engine fills a lot of people with horror after their experiences with diesel particulate filters. But in gasoline engines, they produce less soot. The design really has come a long way. The exhaust gases are running hot and the particulate filter is quite close to the exhaust port on the engine so it's getting a lot of heat early on which really does aid the way this burns off those soot particles that it collects and it's not collecting that many these are very very clean burning engines in the six or seven years that these engines have been out with these particulate filters this service manager has only seen a couple of cases of problems and in both of those cases it's been down to driver neglect they've been doing very very short journeys on very very cold engines and using very very poor quality quality fuel that they got from a supermarket or that's been in the car for months and months on end and that really doesn't help the way the engine burns and they've also not maintained the car very well and ignored the service intervals and not changing spark plugs and keeping the car in running order is asking for trouble especially with cars that have these particulate filters and really I would say don't worry too much about the particulate filters on these EA211 engines they are in the main very very reliable units and very well designed. The exhaust is incorporated into the cylinder head itself that allows everything to warm up more quickly it makes the manufacturing process simpler and easier. It does mean we don't have so much choice in the aftermarket if we want to add modifications and improvements, but drivers seem to be moving away from that. They want a car that does everything out of the factory. They don't want to mess around with it too much themselves. Let me know what you think about that. Will you buy an older car because you can do more to it, or would you prefer a newer car that's had everything done already? We're starting to see substantial power outputs from the 1.4, the 1.5 TFSI engines, particularly the 1.4 with the hybrid motor. We've seen examples in the Golf GTE, 
the the A3, the 40 and the 45 TFSI versions, they're putting out well in excess of 200 horsepower now by clever utilization of the electric motor and the engine itself. The electric motor replaces the alternator and the starter, and they use the electric motor to accommodate these functions that we would have in one of the earlier engines. I believe another difference between the 1.4 and the 1.5 is that 1.5 had plasma coated cylinder walls. I don't think that was done on this generation of the 1.4. Again, they've tried to keep things simple. Also, the 1.4 had a lower injection pressure. The 1.5, as we said, was 350 bars and the ejection system on the 1.4 was 200 bar. Again, there may be some regional variations with that. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please boot the like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. We've got more coming up on the EA211 engines, modifying them, upgrading them, and just tips to improve the long-term reliability. And I've lined up this video and this playlist that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.